Samaru. In there for the touchdown. Coming home here in lane five, well out in front of the field. And Lonchek touches in a time of 52.92, a new high school national record. Back to back to back to back state champions. Sports, Nebraska's home for championship sports, is live from the Bob Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln, Nebraska. As in Class C2 State Championship Showdown, it's the number three GI Central Catholic Crusaders at 27 and 5, taking on Hastings St. Cecilia at 34 and 3. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm Larry Putney, along with Kathy Wieskamp. Great to have you with us for our third showdown of the day. We've already crowned two state champs, and now time for Class C2. Two legendary coaches to go head-to-head -head in what should be a terrific showdown. Two legendary coaches who have played, you know, they've been in this championship match several times. Right. They've, they've never matched up, though, together in this championship match. So, again, this is the first time they're having that opportunity for a state champion chip against one another. Again, these two teams have combined 29 times they've been in the finals. 29 times they've been in this championship map per match. Pretty impressive. And so today, we're going to get a great matchup regardless. Two very well-coached programs. Um, historically, again, very successful, too. Um, Hastings St. Cecilia, number one coming into this match. Um, they have played um, um, Central Catholic three times and have come out victorious. We'll see what happens here today. Central Catholic hoping to change that tide. They actually got into the semifinal match against Superior where they were up 2-0 and had a battle back in yeah. the fifth. Well, let's take a look at where these two teams come from. They're very similar, right? You know, just down what Tom Osborne Highway from each other, right? Grand Island yep. Central Catholic Don't and Hastings St. Cecilia. So they're very familiar with each other, familiar programs as well. How did they get here? What would their path look like? Well, St. Cecilia in a sweep in the first round and a sweep against Lutheran High. A little bit tougher battle for GICC as they took on Superior and won that in a deciding fifth, three to two. Should be a good one between St. Cecilia and GICC. Third member of our crew is Ryan Mix. He's courtside. Thanks, Larry. Yeah, not sure we could ask for a better matchup here in Class C2 between St. Cecilia and GICC. Kathy mentioned 29 appearances in the state finals, 16 state championships between these two schools. So neither team, neither coach should be phased by the big stage. GICC, as Kathy mentioned, did go 0-3 against St. Cecilia this year, but head coach Sharon Savala said they have gotten better against St. Cecilia every time they played, and they feel confident going into this match. GICC will lean on Avery and Allison Calvota, while Hastings St. Cecilia will lean on Tori Thomas and Katherine Hamburger for the Hawkeyes. Looking forward to a great match here at the Devaney Center. All right, thank you very much, Ryan. We've got the Class C2 title game just ahead. Number three seed, GICC, the Crusaders taking out the top seed, St. Cecilia Blue Hawks, when we come back. Early mornings, late nights, emotionally, physically, mentally tougher. Generations of trust, innovation, and hard work done side by side. The decisions you make for your land and livestock have a direct impact on your operation, the region, and the world. That is why we're there when you need us anytime, every time. We both have one chance, one season, one mission. Tougher together. Aurora and you. One, two, one, two, three, four. What do you think about going to college? I'm kind of scared. I feel nervous. A little bit. That's kind of a tough one. I'm not really sure yet. I'm excited for college. <laughs> How are you going to pay for it? To be honest, I don't really know. That's actually a really good question. <laughs> um, so what if you had a friend you could ask? Are you ready? Let's go. Four years of high school can prepare your girls for who they'll be the rest of their life. That's why it's important for students at Marion to have every opportunity to develop in the arts, the sciences, all academics, 
as confident, faith-filled leaders in their community and beyond. The journey begins here. Marion High School. Discover what lies ahead. After concussion, returning to the classroom is a priority of the NSAA. All brains return to learn, not all brains return to play. After recognizing that an athlete has suffered a concussion, it is important to monitor the symptoms in the classroom before allowing the athlete to return to extracurricular activities. The NSAA requires coaches in all sports to take a concussion course once every three years. More information is available on our website, nsaahome.org. Student athletes are students first, athletes second. Not far from the historic Haymarket, from the rail yard here in Lincoln, Nebraska, we are at the Bob Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln for the showdown for the Class C2 State Championship between GICC and St. Cecilia. And now time for introductions. Let's go to Stephen Lemon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bob Devaney Sports Center and the 2019 Nebraska School Activities Association State Volleyball Championships. Today's championship match in Class C2 features the number three seeded Grand Island Central Catholic Crusaders and the number one seed Hastings St. Cecilia Hawkeyes. The NSAA is proud to recognize our premier corporate partners for their outstanding support of NSAA activities. U.S. Bank, Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, the Nebraska Chiropractic Physicians Association, Nebraska Orthopedic and Sports Medicine, and CHI Health St. Elizabeth. And now it's time for the introduction of the players and coaches. Here are the Grand Island Central Catholic Crusaders. Number one, Lauren Willman. Number two, Haley Ashey. Number three, Courtney Toner. Number five, Kate McFarland. Number six, Avery, Avery Calvota. Number seven, Jenna Heidel. Number nine, Allison Calvota. Number 10, Evan Glade. Number 11, Katie Mazur. Number 12, Riley Rice. Number 13, Ellie Stenson. Number 14, Chloe Cloud. Number 15, Madison Urbanski. And number 16, Gracie Woods. The assistant coaches are Mackenzie Mudloff, Kelsey Scheel, Kelsey Werner, and Brittany Riley. The head coach in her 45th season, Sharon Zavala. And now, here are the Hastings St. Cecilia Hawkins. Number three, Rachel Tyson. Number four, Katherine Hamburger. Number six, Jill Parr. Number eight, Haley Reifert. Number nine, Chloe McCauley. Number 14, Emma Schneider. Number 17, Chloe Valentine. Number 18, McKenna Asher. Number 23, Jamie Escamilla. Number 24, Amy Escamilla. Number 26, Kenzie Worthing. Number 28, Addie Kierkegaard. Number 29, Tori Thomas. And number 33, Aaron Sheehy. The assistant coaches are Josie Prevet, Mandy Higgins, and Kellen Schumacher. The head coach in his 42nd season, Alan Van Kira. Today's officials are Troy Green and Stacy Mitchell. The bench official is Simon Weedle. Our line judges are Andrea Woida and Kim Henry. And now, Let's play state championship volleyball! 
Well, it's great to be able to bring you this one across the state right here on NET as we have two legendary coaches battling against each other for a state championship between the two. They have been in state title games 29 times, but have never faced each other for a title. And there is Sharon Zavala in her 45th year overall. She's been inducted into about every Hall of Fame you could possibly be inducted into. The Northwest High School Athletic Hall of Fame, the Nebraska Kearney Athletic Hall of Fame, the Nebraska High School Athletic Hall of Fame. And just this summer, she was inducted into the National High School Athletic Hall of Fame, a legend, Sharon Zavala. And speaking of legends, Alan Van Cura in his 42nd year, like Sharon Zavala, he started in 1975. He retired back in 2014 with 830 career wins, and he said, I don't think I'm done yet. So he came back, and now he's up over 900 career wins, or near 900 career wins. Underway here, C2 title game between Central Catholic and St. Cecilia. Off of the tape and out. GICC on the board early. Well, we're gonna see is two very well coached teams, very fundamentally sound. Um, and, and I think that's the fun part about this match I've been looking forward to. Again, it, it, it will just be a matter of performance and again, how, how kids um, handle it. And both of these coaches to prepare them collectively, not just, again, skill set, but again, mentality and, and, and poise and those kind of things too. So we're in for a great match. Pushed out by Mazur, not down. Three ball over, an opportunity here for the Crusaders. To the pin again. Nice up by Asher in the back row. Asher will send that deep corner, not there. Little try blocked back. That was Hamburger in the middle. Point, though, to the Crusaders. the tape and down and a quick 3-1 lead for GICC. Tough serves, those balls that hit that tape, you just gotta react to. But again, if you see where the, the servers are, the serve receive is, that was an open spot on the court. That was a 53rd ace of the season for Low Wilman. Line wide, no touch and point to the Blue Hawks. Swing there, an aggressive one by Gracie Woods, who is just a freshman. We've seen a few good freshmen already today. I was just going to bring that point <laughs> forward, too. Young and, uh, again, tough. Yeah. Wow, what a Avery, Avery Calvota, the senior, with the swing from the right side. Good kill. She leads this team. She averages just over nine kills um, this season. and one of those go-to pretty balanced really offense for GICC several players hovering around that eight nine kills touch by hamburger not down went back over on second touch so another opportunity aggressive swing and hamburger into the block Hamburger not really in a balanced position there to be able to swing at that ball. Just trying to do something positive. Serve from Woods into the net. Back to serve now is Katherine Hamburger. Just her junior year, second on the team in kills. The hamburger name several times from St. Cecilia. Her hamburger sister Claire played, her mom Amy played. Both for Alan Vancouver. Goes off the top of the block, knocked down. There's an aggressive swing off the hand of Tori Thomas. Thomas, the six foot senior who leads this team in kills. What's that one on? And she's feisty again. She can pack a punch here. Great ball. She really drives too. Right eye 
idea. Tip didn't clear the net from Avery Calvota. Hamburger still with the serve, and we're even at five. Thomas again with the swing up that time. And the second touch kept alive. Upset to Thomas, who tries deep corner. Good swing and the kill by Avery Calvota. Calvota doing a nice job, comes in that three zone in between the blockers and up and big swing. Good serve by Matty Urbanski. Left-handed swing at the net, not down from Kierkegaard. She's Sharon Savala signaling in serving zone. Vansky puts it right there. Great job there by Chloe Cloud. Stayed with it, wasn't quite there, but stuck with it and got the ball. See, it looks like they're targeting Last time they did anyway, targeting Thomas in that back row and trying to keep her right. out of the hitting pattern. Pushing her deep, yep. making it difficult. Come back up and swing. Jill Parr back to serve now for St. Cecilia. Good pass on the slide. Swing by Cloud, not down, but a free ball opportunity. Right back at the Blue Hawks. Left-handed swing pulled away, but down for Kierkegaard. Kierkegaard, a lefty. So you've got to make sure as a blocker you adjust for that. And she's got a lot of space over there on that left side of the block. Good, up in the back row by McFarland. Beautiful. Oh, four hits called on the Crusaders, and we are even at eight. Jill Parr will set and serve now out of the back row for the Blue Hawks. Good cross angle. Calvota with the kill. Or was that Ashy? Calvo. Calvota. Calvota. Yep. Allison this time. Identical twins. <laughs> Sharon Savala says, they've been around for four years and I still can't tell them apart. <laughs> she said, in heated moments when we're in the huddle, I have given the right instruction to the wrong <laughs> sister. She'll go out and execute, and I'm like, what are you doing? That's what you told me to do. No, I meant that for your sister. Did you? Chloe <laughs> Cloud excited after that one. Asher trying to make a strong, aggressive move there. She, too, a, a lefty, but not fooled at all Was Cloud. Cloud's just a sophomore. Big ace extends that lead. Now to three. Tough ball, really driving that ball. And again, look at the movement, having to move to the, out of the outside of the court. Here it comes again. Another tough one for Mazer, overpass. They'll reset. Roman tries the tip. Tip try again and sit right back over. Set was a bit off. Out of the middle. Boy, good coverage. coverage. 
Longest rally here of set number one, and it's a good one. There's Roman. <laughs> well, both teams just trying to stay in system. And finally, the Blue Hawks win the point. <laughs> Everybody's cheering. Great rally on both sides. Knocked down from Calvota. Left handed swing on that right side. Asher into the net. Serve from Courtney Toner. Well, that is a tough floater. Did you see the, the seams did not move on that volleyball at all. And so what then happens, it just drops on you. When there's not that spin on it, it's just gonna float and drop. Completely unpredictable movement when you can take all spin <laughs> off of it. Another one, <laughs> beautiful. Let's sit back. The pin rolled over by McCauley, not down. Yes, aggressive swing on the left side. And Woods not, and then McCauley again gets the kill. Great swing there by McCauley. Threading the needle blockers, just being persistent and drives it through the seam. Not quite close, she recognizes. Gets it through. here in set number one, 13-11. Crusaders with the slight advantage. Back to serve now is the libero, Aaron Sheehy. Carr leaves it there. Swing by Hamburger, not down. Behind her this time, bump set is about. All oh, Asher could do with that. And then down the line, kept alive. What a smart play by Hamburger. Just tried to push that off the block and get the kill. That ball coming over her shoulder, kind of behind her head, does a great job finding it and really doing something positive. serve. Bump set out the pin. Good up by Sheehy. Aggressive swing and down. That block ends the 3-0 run from the Blue Hawks. Chloe Cloud got a hand on that. Back to serve now goes Kate McFarland for the Crusaders. Colley, but not down. Tip try in the middle. A little bit of a slip there off the tip. Asher did a nice job popping that ball up, but then there was no setter, and, and again, that's where the confusion a little bit. Top of the block, got the kill. Great high hand shot by McCauley. Big blockers in front of her. And again, she's the only 5'7", so going up against a big block, shoots for those hands and gets the results. Never kept that alive. Holly again into the solo block of Low Wilman. And then a little traffic in front of the net. The 
between the Crusaders and St. Cecilia back to within one. And the ace evens it at 15. Three zip run. That's the 71st ace on the season for McKenna Ashley. And that was just long. So here is Lo Willman. The woman played with her sister Cam for that title in 2017 when the Crusaders finished as the runners up. Sister now plays at College of St. Mary's. Actually, two older sisters who played there. She's heading there as well. She's had a good tournament, does a great job defensively for the Saints, for uh, Central Catholic. She had 12 digs in the first round and 25 in the five game match yesterday. Great effort there by Kate McFarland, 5'7", senior libero for the Crusaders. He's been a four-year starter for this club, and that goes off the block and down, and a kill by Gracie Woods. Here's a look at McFarland, four-year starter. She played right side for the first three years of her career, and then in the offseason, Sharon Zavala said, you know what, we'll be a better team if we can move you to libero. And all she has done is set a record for the most digs in a match at 41 for Central Catholic. And she, she, I mean, her pursuit of balls. I mean, the, there is no hesitation. And the other piece is she's quick feet, and she really reads well. And so that's allowed her to be very, very successful in that role. Well, let's take a look at last year's 2018 Class C2 title. Partington Cedar Catholic faced Blue Hill in the 2017 Class C2 Volleyball Championship, looking for redemption after falling in the 2017 title game. The Bobcats took the first two sets behind senior Riley Cometcher's match high 14 kills. Partington Cedar Catholic was not ready to give up and took the third set. The Crusaders led 19 to 10 in the fourth, but Blue Hill rallied back with the 16 to five run to take home their first volleyball state title. It was a first ever for Blue Hill. Cedar Catholic, by the way, made it back down here to state this year. Made it into the semifinals of Class D1 before losing in straight sets to Diller Odell. And of course, Diller Odell earlier today went on to win that school's first ever state championship. They're tending here to Aaron Sheehy. So maybe a retaping of a finger or. See a little bit of blood there, um, I believe, so. That's assistant coach Josie Previtt who's helping out. <laughs> officials now coming over to Van Curren say, OK, we got to go here. You better put somebody else in, and they will. And then they'll sub in. Because it's the libero position. Yep. So Haley Reifert is now in that back row. Reifert, a sophomore. And serving for the Crusaders will be Gracie Woods. And the ace. Even that just little change yep. in the back row can create confusion, although they are targeting Asher in that back row. Right. And that one a bit long. So back to serve for the Blue Hawks goes Catherine Hamburger. Into the front row and back into the game is Adeline Kierkegaard. Here is Hamburger to serve. 
Second touch. Good cover there by McCauley, who noticed it right away. Into the block. Kierkegaard gets credit for the block. Back to within two by the Blue Hawks. Back to serve now is Hamburger. She's had a good tournament down here. 11 kills and 12 kills in the two matches. Did not clear the tape, so four hits called on the Crusaders. And a good run here by Hamburger. Broadcaster's jinx. Yep. <laughs> Sorry about that, Kathy. Aaron Sheehy back in there now in that back row all taped up. She's ready to go. Three ball. In the middle. Wow, with the big block, but did not fall on the other side, fell right in front of her. So it was a point for the Blue Hawks. You sure thought that. Yep, one. it did. Yep. But again, just enough. Didn't get it closed up and down the front. Outside, aggressive swing by Calvoto. And that is Allison Calvoto with the kill. Really kind of working that line and, and again, the reaction of St. Cecilia. Got it up, but that was all they could do. Quick push to the pin, left hand to keep it alive, but a kill nonetheless, and a nice play by Tori Thomas. Nice quick tempo, as you mentioned, to the outside. Corey Thomas ready, made a nice play. Left for Calvota, who splits the block right between it. Allison there again on the right side this time. Gracie Woods back in now for the Crusaders and a timeout on the floor as the Crusaders are two away from taking set number one. There's Alan Van Curry. He's going to take that timeout. It's our pleasure to be able to bring you these state high school championships to you right here on NET. I want to remind you there is more NSAA championship action later this month when the best football teams from across the state meet to battle for the state title. You can see all of the action from Memorial Stadium on NET Monday, uh, November 25th and Tuesday, November 26th. Live streaming is available at netnebraska.org or on the NET Nebraska app and supported through Apple TV and Chromecast. Out of the timeout. Courtney Toner in there to serve for the Crusaders. And it does not clear the net. Service error. So an effective timeout again. Yeah. Coach not only wanting to talk to his kid about doing something, but also again make that server think a little bit longer. Five errors, five aces for the Crusaders from the service line. One, two, two. Yeah! That was pounded by Gracie Woods into the block and it falls on the Blue Hawk side, and we have set point here in the first. And back to serve is Kate McFarland. Good swing and a kill. Second set point upcoming for the Crusaders. And Kenna Asher back to serve to try to extend this to extra points. Passes off, puts him out of system, rolled over. Good opportunity here for the Blue Hawks. In the middle, blocked, good cover. Really nice cover by Sheehy. And then the swing from the left side out of system and a kill. McCauley does a great job, not an ideal ball. Took something better of the ball.
24 all, and we'll have extra points here in set number one between the Blue Hawks and the Crusaders. Crowd on hand here at the Bob Devaney Sports Center for this C2 State Championship match. Still serving now for the Blue Hawks is McKenna Asher. Good pass by Wilman. Left-handed kill. Gracie Woods. Gracie just controlled the ball. She really had one blocker up there, but just read the situation where the ball was set. And goes up with that left hand, actually. Makes the strong play. Tough serve by Wilman. Her 54th ace of the season, second of the first set. And the Crusaders take set number one. Well, they squandered a couple, but came through and won set number one. 26-24, extra points in the first, and a good one. Crusaders take the first. Whether it's spring planting, fall harvesting, or just a drive across the state. Soy Biodiesel helps a diesel-powered engine operate in a demanding job. Soybean oil from Nebraska soybeans makes biodiesel a renewable fuel that's also environmentally responsible. The soybean checkoff plays a major role in supporting the use and availability of biodiesel. The Nebraska Soybean Board, growing opportunity from the ground up. The uh, money that comes from Constellation, goes directly back into our county 4-H program. So they're directly impacting young people and the development of young people, whether that's leadership uh, development, citizenship development, or helping them develop life skills. Constellation provides natural gas for Nebraska homes, farms, ranches, and businesses. Through our support for 4-H and FFA, we're providing energy for Nebraska's future as well. Natural gas from Constellation. Nebraska's rich history of high school sports is alive at the Nebraska High School Sports Hall of Fame. Interactive exhibits bring the action to life. Historic memorabilia preserve the rich heritage. Recognizing teams, athletes, coaches, administrators, and community members, the Nebraska High School Sports Hall of Fame in the NSAA headquarters just north of Haymarket Park at 500 Charleston Street in Lincoln. More at nbhalloffame.org. Not just on the good days. Not just on the challenging ones. Not just during business hours. Or when relaxing. But always, for the past 125 years, Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Uh, what a beautiful day here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Temperatures expected to get up into the 60s on this outstanding set. And here's a look at Holmes Lake. And here's a look at Low Willman closing out set number one with another ace. That's two aces for Willman in set one. And by the way, she's been serving it up down here at State. She had three aces in the opening round, six aces in the second round. And Low Willman now with 11 aces down here at State to give her a total of 63 now on the year. That leads the Crusaders. So many good things can happen when you are good and tough from the service line. into the antenna. Good 
Good pass. Right back to her again. And a nice dig in the back row. Hamburger just cut the ball came right on top of her and she tried to make a, a strong play sending it over. Just got kind of twisted with her hand and caught the tape. Touch by Mazur. That's Katie Mazur. Strong play up there. Just saw that ball come right to her. Didn't hesitate at all. And was aggressive as she threw that ball to the floor. Mazur also a four-year starter for this Crusader squad. She's headed to Creighton next year. From that right pin, an aggressive swing by Chloe McCauley. And McCauley gets another ace. McCauley already with five aces here in the match. She had six in the first round, five in the second. Big block on the left side. That's Kierkegaard. Well, it was Thomas out there on the right side. Check that. Yep. Thomas along with Hamburger. Tough duo to get the ball by. Block touches here, yeah. keeping balls alive by both teams. And then into the net. Gracie yeah. Woods just kind of brushed the net there after that ball was a bit too tight. Yeah, I think kind of our arm followed through and caught in there. There's a ball she can really swing at. What a great up there by Sheehy. Zip, Blue Hawk run. And Hamburger, big swing there. Fourth kill. And Sharon Zavala will take a timeout. Hamburger's kill makes it 6-2 and a 4-0 run for Hastings St. Cecilia. Let's get out on the floor to uh, Ryan Mix. Well, guys, GICC head coach Saren Savala has a great sense of humor, and she has seven seniors on this team, and she calls them the seven dwarves, and they actually made it a theme around the team this year in their poster, centered around the seven seniors, Avery Calvota, Allison Calvota, Katie Mazur, Kate McFarland, Lauren Willman, Ellie Stenson, and Courtney Toner. So Avery is grumpy, Allison is happy, Kate <laughs> is bashful, KD, I'm sorry, is bashful. Kate is Doc. Lauren is dopey. Ellie is sneezy because she has a lot of allergies. And Courtney is sleepy. So the girls embraced it. They had some fun with it. But kind of funny that these great athletes are also the seven dwarves. <laughs> a very senior laden yeah. team. So. Very much so. Deal with about all of them except grumpy. I don't want to be grumpy, do you? Yeah, I wouldn't want the grumpy one. Dopey? Do well, okay. <laughs> Maybe there's two you don't want to be. <laughs> and we're not going to call them by their nickname. Nope. <laughs> Calavota here. Works hard and try to take it under that, catch the inside of the block, and really just again look at nice shot, very sharp cut shot. On the net. Six service errors on the Crusaders here early in set number two. There's six errors and six aces. Good pass. Calvota. Good up. Asher kept it alive. Aggressive swing on the left side of the kill by Tori Thomas. 
Thomas doing a great job there. Just got pulled a little bit inside. And an ace for the Blue Hawks. Definitely interjecting some energy here and kill, service ace, quick points. To back aces for Hamburger. Four zip run for St. Cecilia. Tight to the net. Three ball here for the Crusaders. And the kill by Calvota. Avery Calvota with the swing. Got a nice pass, and Calvota did a great job coming in and feeling that uh, uh, blocker on to her right, turns her whole body and takes it to the left. <laughs> Little dick kill there. <laughs> Got a great reaction from Haley Ashley. That's what you want to do as a defensive specialist. Come in and make big things happen and get a kill off of a big dig. <laughs> Just like I planned it, coach. Kierkegaard does a nice job there. Keeps that nice high hand, took some heat off of it. Just controlled it. Great placement of the ball. Jill Parr will serve. Calvota off the top of the block. Nice up by Sheehy. On the middle, and the kill by Chloe Cloud. A uh, great job there, just high hand. The blockers were in front of her, so she just took a nice controlled swing off the top and went long. The tape and the ace, seven aces for the Crusaders. Low flat serve. Block touch kept it alive. Calvota sends it over. Free ball. Pulled back in by Sheehy. Calvota a little more aggressive that time and got the kill. That is five kills for Allison Calvota, and her identical twin has identical number of kills <laughs> with six. Quite a pair. Again, she just threads the needle there, just sneaks it between the block and the pin. Good turn on the ball. Cloud. Cloud. Crusaders showing a bit of life here now with a four zip run. On Mazur's serve. Mazur with another ace. 27 aces now on the season for Mazur. Two here during this run. And three in the, in the match. She's got a nice low flat ball. It's really coming a good pace too. I nearly put that down. In fact, the overpass forces the net violation on the Blue Hawks and the Crusaders in the middle of a run to take the lead 12-11. There's a six zip run for GICC. Grand Island Central Catholic trailed this 10 to 4, and since then they've gone on an 8 1 run, including a 6 zip run, which makes it 12 11 now. Most of that on the serve of their setter, Katie Mazur. 
as Mazur, as we said, a four-year starter heading to Creighton next year. And again, the nice thing, too, she's serving tough, and then she's got three attackers up front transitioning back mm. off of an easier ball. So really, again, lots of pluses. <laughs> Cloud with the block. <laughs> she's having a great time out there, but she's having a great match. This series across the front, she's been tough. Here she is taking it one-on-one. -on -one. Just off the net, but through is Tori Thomas. And Thomas now back to serve as that ends the seven zip run for GICC. Good pass left for Cloud. Some attack there by Calvota. Same, but not down for Asher. Up to Asher again. Calvota! What a shot! Right along the tape, and the angle got the kill. Allison Calvota did not have a great ball, but she did great things with it. She only has one opportunity to get that in the ball is go that sharp angle across. That's just physics. There's no more court to keep it inside the, the pin. Great job. Tough serve by Toner. Two touches. Uh, made the decision, didn't have the ball in a good position to be able to take it behind her. It was a little low. Up. She's putting herself in the right position. She's being strong and getting great success. That time powered through the yep. block of Cloud. Asher just really knocked Cloud back off there. She's a powerful attacker. She's a lefty, too. And again, all those things got to be factored in as you go up. up by Sheehy. Keep that alive. And it leads to the point. Defense results in points. And that's a great example right there. Cloud slides it right between the two blockers. Gets the kill. Working hard in transition, got up there. And like you said, she had two blockers on there. She just punched it through. The block in out, another kill by Asher. She's a power hitter, goes up hard. Looked like a good cut, but wide. No touch, and St. Cecilia with the point to pull it within one. Have a look. Yep, here we get a chance to kind of see. Just sliced it underneath. Missed the fingers. Opportunity here. Yep. What a shot down the line. <laughs> Tracy Woods pounded that down the line to extend the lead to two, ending that three zip run for the Blue Hawks. there 
by Wilman. Oh, smart play. Found that near corner and just dropped it in. Just a little finesse there. The blocker comes in and squeezes in. That means she vacated that, that spot on the floor. Another line shot. She's got a small blocker in front of her as well. Taking advantage, making smart decisions there. There by Asher also feeding up her big attacker and seeing her success celebrating that as well. Again, one on one. Oh, what a big block by the center, Katie Mazur. Mazur did an incredible job there. She looked at her attacker and squared right up with her. Her whole body arced. And then the service error by McFarland. to serve now for the Blue Hawks goes Jill Parr. Cloud try to roll it, Sheehy there. Asher's swing, not down and out. Off the block, so Asher with the kill and we are even at 20 here in set number two. Asher's been tough on that right side. They really feed her anytime they can. Been slow and methodical, but the St. Cecilia Blue Hawks have gotten back in this one. That's a good swing by Calvota, but kept alive. Some great defense. Calvota again aggressively at it. That's down, and, yep. and again, it's Mazer with the tip. Mazer working hard. She knows she's by herself um, sometimes over there. So she's just making strong moves. And, and like I said, just nose, lining up nose to nose. Off the block and out. Good aggressive swing there by Thomas. Back to even. And Thomas back to serve. There's Allison Calvota with the kill. Trying to serve for the Crusaders is Courtney Toner. Connected. Yep. Had an opportunity with Kierkegaard. And that gives GICC the two point advantage here late in set number two and an important one. So, timeout called by Alan Van Curl. Coverage of the 2019 NSAA Volleyball Championships on NET is made possible in part by. Nebraska Soybean Board, Education Quest, Nebraska Public Power District, Constellation, 
and Aurora Cooperative. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the best high school athletes from across the state. We could not do it without your support. We are at the Bob Devaney Sports Center here in Lincoln along with Kathy Wieskamp. I'm Larry Putney. It's great to have you with us all day long here on NAT as we crown six state champions here at the Nebraska High School Volleyball Championships presented by the Nebraska School Activities Association. Here we are in class C2. And that is just wide up the block of Low Wilman. And pulls the Blue Hawks back to within one. Sheehy back to serve. Crusaders two away from going up two sets to none here in this C2 title match. Cloud with the set, just pushed over there by Gracie Woods. And that is long, no touch, and just barely long. Just. So set point here in the second. Crusaders with the opportunity to go up two to none. And to serve for it is Maddie Urbanski. Off serve. Crusaders up to zip. GICC came in the third seed. They're trying to take home the 10th state championship for GICC. And Calvota with the kill to end it in the second. The morning doesn't always start when you want it to. It starts when it has to. And day or night, we're up when you are, through the good times, through the tough times, for the necessary and the unexpected. Even when you don't need us at all, we're just a light switch away. And when it's finally time to call it a night, we keep the lights on, ready to do it all over again. Nebraska Public Power District, powering your every day, every day. I'm Nicole Brungart, and I'm a part of the U.S. Women's Bobsled Team. I'm a four-time All-American, and I'm from Norfolk, Nebraska. Bobsledding was definitely not in the picture when I was growing up, but I'm thankful to be where I'm at, and I'll never take that for granted. In my career, I'm getting bumped around, bruised in the back of the bobsled, so it's super important that I keep up with my sleep, my nutrition, seeing my trainer, seeing the chiropractor, and staying in the gym so I can be at the top of my game when competition comes. Early mornings, late nights, emotionally, physically, mentally tougher. Generations of trust, innovation, and hard work done side by side. The decisions you make for your land and livestock have a direct impact on your operation, the region, and the world. That is why we're there when you need us anytime, every time. We both have one chance, one season, one mission, tougher together. Aurora and you. Participating in multiple Nebraska high school activities has taught me the value of teamwork. I learned how to be a strong leader among my peers. We set goals as a team and work hard to accomplish them. I strive to excel not only in the classroom but on the playing field. The Nebraska School Activities Association providing opportunities in 25 activities for our member high schools. NSAA activities, the other half of education. Uh, it's good to be a Crusader right now on top, two sets to none after taking the second 25-22 here in this class C2 title game. Crusaders looking for that school's 10th state championship. Here's a look at the numbers through two. Really, if you look at statistically, very even all the way down. I think the one that stands out are both ace. I mean, we've talked about the tough serving, but the blocks, the block also, and um, Really, Chloe Cloud kind of kicked things up in that last set. Bump set over by McCauley. A tip trying out there from Gracie Woods. McCauley with another more aggressive swing, and that time puts it down. 
Nice big swing there too. Got a ball that she could really do something with. Grand Island Central Catholic looking for that school's 10th state championship. They've won nine runner-up titles and nine state championships. This is their 19th appearance in the state final, and they are 9-9 nine and nine in the previous 18. There's Sharon Savala. Columbus Scotus has won 15 titles, Bell West 12, and Savala has nine for GICC. They get into double digits, only the third school in state history with a win here today. Big block there by the Blue Hawks at the net. Tell you, Kath Catherine ha Hamburger was integral <laughs> yeah. in that part. Think about the two coaches that we have here in this match in Sharon Zavala and Alan Van Kura in their tenure. You makes you think about some of the other great coaches that we've had around the state of Nebraska. Of course, we have great coaches at every level. The volleyball here in the state has played at such a high level, and the coach is so knowledgeable. But in terms of longevity, you think of John Peterson, right? Another one who won 15 titles at SCOTUS. And he and Sharon Savala have scored off many times yes. in state title games. So Peterson and Savala. Absolutely been in, the, in these matchups. And, and again, just outstanding coaching. Yep. You know? And another name that comes to mind is a recent retiree is Steve Morgan. Yeah. I'm out at Ogallala. And again, long time. He was coaching as I, I was in high school. And again, just always, again, the year in, year out, and never had a season with a losing record. Wow. So, pretty impressive resumes. When we talked about Sharon Zavala being the first Nebraska prep coach to reach a thousand career wins, said Steve Morgan hung on maybe one more year. He probably could have been there. I think he finished with yep. 984, 985. Yep. Three titles, four state runner ups, yeah. 30 state appearances. So, uh, definitely. One of those legendary coaches. Shelly Byrne, longtime St. Pat's coach, has taken over that job, taken over for Steve Morgan out of Ogallala. There is Sharon. We got Savalo, Vancura, Peterson, Morgan. We got a lot of up and comers that you just know eventually are going to be legendary coaches in the state if they stick with it for a while. We're going to see one here later this afternoon in Renee Saunders very early in her career, but already with four consecutive state titles and what she's done with that SCUT program has been remarkable. Incredible, and again, like you said, these folks too have been laid that foundation for that too, and again, the standards and, and been mentors, and um, that's what I guess, again, it's always that point forward. I love to see yeah. that. Um, coaches are really helping to grow the sport and improve the level that we have across the state. Who am I forgetting? Kathy Wieskamp was a coach for a while, right? <laughs> In the day. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Um, and, and again, the, these folks, that's what they speak to. We love it. And, and we've heard, I don't know how many times we've talked to coaches, I love my kids. I love the kids that we get to work with. And that's the great part about coaching. Changing lives. Three balled over here. 6 3. Crusaders early on. Make it 7 3. And that's a three zip run. I'm just saying, Chloe Cloud is having an incredible afternoon here. She has been playing outstanding, both blocking and offensively. One of the other things that makes Sharon Zavala such an outstanding coach is. You know, she goes through her summer camp, evaluates the talent, and then when it comes time to begin the thought process for fall, that's when she starts putting all of the pieces together. And how many times have we seen someone that plays for Sharon all of a sudden make a big move or a big shift in position to be able to support the team? And getting players to buy into that and accept a new role. I mean, think about how hard it must have been 
for Sharon Savala to go to Kate McFarland and say, hey, you're about to be a four-year starter, and I know you hit right side, you got all the kills, and everything, but I'm going to move you to Libero this year, and you're going to be successful, and it's going to be great, and it's going to be good for the team <laughs> to get that level of buy-in from your players. It's trust, you know, and, and she's earned that respect and that trust, and she believes in them and knows that I believe this, and, and this is about a greater good too also and, and is able to convey that and again what an outstanding year Kate McFarlane has had in this role it just looks different you know and so does the makeup of this lineup than it has previous years and got a lot of seniors out there um, so those are the things great coaches do and value each of their players and yeah. takes what every year is different it, it's not a system it's it's the kids that make Tori Thomas with that last kill, kind of swiping it off the block, and now back to serve. Chloe Cloud with another kill. Let's come alive here. She's got uh, six kills on 13 swings, hitting over 400. I was going to say over 400 hitting percentage. Again, you talk about her blocks. She has had her hands on multiple blocks. She's got five listed to her name, but her hands have been wow. on a lot of others as well. Just a sophomore is... Chloe Cloud. Didn't clear the tape. Looking across at that big block from Cloud and Woods. And really trying to push that ball, you know, back to Asher. Um, a little bit off the net, not quite there. Asher's in a strong, assertive a attacker. Two hits. And that two hit, a direct result of a very tough serve for GICC and Courtney Toner. We talk about it, sorry, all the time, how that serve controls what your opponent can do. And that's really what we're seeing happen. Three zip lead, or three zip run right now for the Crusaders. of the 2019 NSAA Volleyball Championships on NET is made possible in part by Nebraska Soybean Board, Education Quest, Nebraska Public Power District, Constellation, and Aurora Cooperative. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the best high school athletes from across the state. We could not do it without your support. We are back at the Bob Devaney Sports Center here in Lincoln. Crusaders of Grand Island Central Catholic on top. Two sets to none and leading by five here in the middle of a three to nothing run. Alan Van Cura taking a timeout. Did not want this to get away from him. And now make it a four zip run. Bob Hammer of the Grand Island Independent did a nice little story on Sharon Savale. He he asked her, and you know, I just want to be clear, Bob asked her, I didn't <laughs> ask her how old she was and how long she was going to be coach. And she said, Well, I'm 66, I think I could probably coach until I'm 70. And he said, Oh, most people don't like to talk about their age. And she goes, Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> I, you know. <laughs> That's, that's right. That's Sharon, isn't it? <laughs> yep, totally. And again, if, if you watch her here, I mean, she is so poised. And we watched her yesterday in that semifinal match, which was an incredible match. And, and again, was up 2-0. And Superior came back and took the next two. And you wouldn't know the difference between set one through set five, what was going on. And again, she provides that stability for our kids, too. Yeah. I have to believe the heart. Is pumping though. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But the other interesting comment in that piece by Bob was Sharon said, "You know, we haven't always had the best talent, but we don't tell them that <laughs> because half of success is believing that you're every bit as good as anybody else." Uh, honestly, it it is a mindset, yes. you know, and again, it's also a, a culture. And um, talk about, uh, again, a culture of winning. Um, that's just, it's uh, automatic. That's just the thought process. That's outside the antenna, so a point for the Blue Hawks. Mentor to so many, those two. What? 
Good tip. Nice reaction there to keep it alive by Joe Paul. Great reactions. Tape and out. Was there a touch? No. Nope. Called it. Didn't get across. Stayed below the tape. Quite the one-handed set out to the pin there. Yep. <laughs> for the Blue Hawks. I see Catherine Hamburger out there too, trying to encourage and rally her team. Another tough serve by Wilman. Overpass leads to the kill. <laughs> Calzota with the kill, and Wilman just keeps serving nails. She has been tough this entire match. She's just the, her locations and that low flat ball. There is Lo Wilman next year heading to College of St. Mary's where her two older sisters play volleyball. Good time for you to connect with us on Facebook and Twitter. You can add a comment or maybe catch up on the latest Nebraska sports information. Also appreciate it if you would like NAT Sports and join in our conversation. Good encouragement going on there from McKenna Asher to her teammates during this timeout. Down by eight here in set number three. And if they're going to make a run, it needs to start now. Absolutely. And that's what Coach is talking to him, too. And again, we, we're seeing Asher, Hamburger, really talking to those others around him. It's now. We've got to go. Another Just game. cleared the tape. No touch swing is long. at state for Low Wilman. I mean, that is just clearing that tape. <laughs> it's coming at a nice, fast pace. Tough, tough serves. You see the movement on it. Yep. Back line of the kill to end the run. Hamburger needed that. St. Cecilia trying now to get a run of their own. Calling out a serve. <laughs> Left-handed touch, good hustle by McCauley to keep that alive, and it leads to the point for the Blue Hawks. Hamburger with the kill. Staying tough up the net. A lot of kind of chaos up there, and sitting on top of the on the, on top of the tape. the top of the block Gracie Woods with the kill high hand shot you got big hands up there you got to use them back in now to serve for the Crusaders Haley Ashy overpass got it off the block and Calvota is there to put it down Avery Calvota taking that deep. Again, didn't have to do a lot with it. Everything was all tight at the net. She just needed to keep it in the court, send it to the back half, nobody home. The tip is not clear. Didn't get a good hand on it. Just smiles. Not much you can say. <laughs> this GICC Crew Sweeter squad yesterday knocked off Superior in the semis in five sets. They actually, Superior led in game number two, 24 oh. to 18. Superior led, about ready to even it a set apiece. And of course, Superior has Kayla Meyer and the younger Meyer 
you know, Kaylin will be at Nebraska next year, and the younger, the freshman, boy, does she look good as well. Yeah. Just a very talented player. She played outstanding. And they look so good in that match, Shayla, the, the younger sister. And they led, Superior led at 24 to 18. And this Crusader squad ran off eight straight points to win it 26-24. Incredible. I mean, that, yeah. especially again when we're talking the quality of, of competition. Yeah. And a lot of that was because of what they were doing at the service line. And we're seeing it again here tonight. Just Superior struggled to handle this tough serving of the Crusaders. And then I would also say, again, the defense and the organization, where they stay organized so well. well. It's been nine years since Grand Island Central Catholic has walked away with the state championship trophy. It was back in 2010 they last won it. They were here in 2017, lost. They were runner-up. side there. Back in for the Crusaders comes Avery, Avery Calvota. Back to serve as par. Great up by McFarland. the block. Not yet, says Tori Thomas. I believe that's the eighth kill for Thomas. Again, just trying to be aggressive, make strong moves. In the middle. <laughs> Once again, Chloe Cloud with a kill. Chloe Cloud, it's been definite spark. Back to serve is Katie Mazur. Tough serve by Mazur, pulled back in, free ball. Mazur pitches it out. And the Crusaders are at championship point. Serve outside in the block, kept alive. And just long off of the swing by Calvota. Championship point number two. 2010. The last time GICC won a title. And they won it again. Central Catholic, the Class C2 state champs, and Sharon Savala has won 10 state titles. I'm going to have to start putting them on the toes now. <laughs> And again, avenge three losses to Hastings St. Cecilia this season. And as, as you said, Coach right. Zavala said, we've just been getting better. We've been getting closer. They came out today. And definitely, this is the one. If you're going to win one of those, this is the one. The fourth time this year they squared off with the Blue Hawks. They picked the big stage to get the win and a state title. Grand Island Central Catholic will get trophies and medals when we come back. For me, asking why is just getting started. It's more than an activity. It's me doing what I love. I'm not a stereotype. When I rewrite the rules, things get better. I know that all these experiences matter. These moments will help me become something more. Little things always lead to something bigger. Do it. Track it. 
earn it. What you're doing now will help you get scholarships later. Find resources from Education Quest at trackyoursuccess.org. Have you ever wondered what happens to soybeans after they're harvested? Every year, soybean farmers invest a portion of their soybean revenue to fund research, marketing, and promotion, which is called the Nebraska Soybean Checkoff. 80% of the harvested soybeans are crushed into soybean meal that's used to feed poultry and livestock. The other 20% is made into soybean oil that's used for cooking oil and biodiesel. To learn more about the Nebraska Soybean Checkoff, nebraskasoybeans.org. FFA's vision is to build leaders, grow communities, and strengthen agriculture. The funds from Constellation will most likely be directed to one of those areas. But most importantly, um, people need to know that it is at the local level. It's helping local chapters. Constellation provides natural gas for Nebraska homes, farms, ranches, and businesses. Through our support for 4-H and FFA, we're providing energy for Nebraska's future as well. Natural gas from Constellation. of the 2019 NSAA Volleyball Championships on NET is made possible in part by Nebraska Soybean Board, Education Quest, Nebraska Public Power District, Constellation, and Aurora Cooperative. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the best high school athletes from across the state. We could not do it without your support. So there's the final three sets to nine. Grand Island Central Catholic knocks off St. Cecilia. It's a sweep, 25-15 in the third, the 10th title. Time now for medals and trophy presentations for both teams. Let's go to Steve Lemon. The Nebraska School Activities Association, the Nebraska Coaches Association, and the Nebraska Athletic Administrators Association are proud to support positive sportsmanship during the state championships and throughout the season. At this time, we are pleased to present the Sportsmanship Award for Class C2. The trophy is graciously donated by Awards Unlimited. The Sportsmanship Program is exclusively presented by Concordia University of Nebraska, now proudly partnering with Concordia University, Irvine, California, in offering the nation's number one graduate program in coaching and athletics administration and exercise sciences. Making the presentation from Concordia University is Scott Sievers, Senior Vice President for Enrollment and Marketing. The Class C2 Sportsmanship Award winner is Grand Island Central Catholic High School. Congratulations, Grand Island Central Catholic High School. The Nebraska School Activities Association is honored to have medals and trophies for both of these outstanding teams. Presentations will be made by NSAA Executive Director Jay Beller, NSAA Board of Directors Dan Kieser from Sutherland, and U.S. Bank Representative C.J. Cooper. Here are the awards for runner-up Hastings St. Cecilia High School. <laughs> Head coach Alan Van Kira and his assistants will present the silver medals. Players, please come forward as your name is called. Number three, Rachel Tyson. Number four, Katherine Hamburger. Number six, Jill Parr. Number eight, Haley Reifert. Number 17, Chloe Valentine. Number 23, Jamie Escamilla. Number 24, Amy Escamilla. Number 26, Kenzie Worthing. Number 28, Addie Kierkegaard. Number 33, Aaron Sheehy. And now the seniors, number nine, Chloe McCauley.
number 14, Emma Snyder. Number 18, McKenna Asher. And number 29, Tori Thomas. For these outstanding athletes and their school, here is the 2019 NSAA Class C2 State Volleyball Runner-Up Trophy. Congratulations, Hastings St. Cecilia High School. And now to the champions, Grand Island Central Catholic High School. <laughs> Head coach Sharon Zavala, we have a special award for you. <laughs> coach Zavala and her assistants will present the gold medals. Players, please come forward as your name is called. Number two, Haley Ashey. Number seven, Jenna Heidelk. Number 10, Evan Glade. Number 12, Riley Rice. Number 14, Chloe Cloud. Number 15, Madison Urbanski. Number 16, Gracie Woods. And now to the seniors. Number one, Lauren Wilman. Number three, Courtney Toner. Number five, Kate McFarland. Number six, Avery Calvona. Number nine, Allison Calvona. Number 11, Katie Mazur. And number 13, Ellie Stenson. <laughs> Presenting the championship game ball from Farmers Mutual Insurance, Regional Director of Agencies, Tim Below. And now for these outstanding athletes and their school, here is the 2019 NSAA Class C2 State Volleyball Championship Trophy. Congratulations, Grand Island Central Catholic High School. Well, congratulations to the state champs for the 10th time. Grand Island Central Catholic takes home the hardware from Lincoln. Congratulations to the Crusaders. When we come back, we'll hear from the champs. C2 title holders when we come back on NET Sports. Not just on the good days. Not just on the challenging ones. Not just during business hours. Or when relaxing but always. For the past 125 years, Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. It's you I like. Hi, I'm Michael Keaton. Come to the Mr. Rogers neighborhood and celebrate the programs that have inspired more than four generations of children and parents. 
Oh, I love this. It's the one where you blow really, really hard. It's really magic. It's so far beyond just entertainment. Well-known friends share their heartfelt memories on Mr. Rogers, It's You I Like. Sunday afternoon at 4 Central on NET. This fall, it's a season of inspiration and revelation. Witness the power of education with College Behind Bars. It changes the whole outlook. It's hard, but it's rewarding. Discover new ways to look at ourselves in life from above. Experience one family's journey through the Syrian conflict and enjoy Broadway's best with great performances. All this and more this season. Hi, Create viewers. I'm Bridget Lancaster. And I'm Julia Collin Davison from Cook's Country. You're gonna love this. Coming up on Create is the new season of Cook's Country as a marathon. Binge watchers, get ready. That's six hours of delicious classic dishes and everyday favorites. Ooh, Ooh on the nose. Yeah, huh? So I'm gonna start with the one I'm not crazy about. Mm. <laughs> We're bringing America's best recipes home to you. You won't wanna miss it. Coming soon to Create. Coverage of the 2019 NSAA Volleyball Championships on NET is made possible in part by Nebraska Soybean Board, Education Quest, Nebraska Public Power District, Constellation, and Aurora Cooperative. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the best high school athletes from across the state. We could not do it without your support. And welcome back to the Bob Devaney Sports Center. GICC, your state champs in class two for the 10th time. And time now to check in on the champs. And with that, we go to Ryan Mix. Thanks, Larry, here with head coach Sharon Savala of GICC. This is a familiar sight for you holding that championship trophy. It's the 10th for the Crusaders. And how does this one feel for you? Well, it never gets old. And, and it's just so nice for our kids. It's their first one. And, and I'm, I'm really happy for them because they uh, worked hard for four years to, to come to this point. And Hastings, St. Cecilia, and GICC, obviously you guys are very familiar with each other. You played three times during the season, and you were 0-3, yet here you are sweeping them in the state finals. How did that happen? I'm not quite sure because um, I still can't believe we beat them in three sets. But we peaked at the right time, and we just kept getting better. And every time we played them, uh, we, got a, we got a step closer to them. And uh, by playing them three times, we, they, let us, they showed us um, some areas we needed to improve on, and these girls did that. What did you think was the difference in the third set when you guys really kicked it up a notch? I think we just stayed aggressive, and um, I think uh, we were confident, and uh, I thought our setter did a really nice job distributing the ball and keeping them off balance. Well, Coach, you've been doing this for 45 years. You have over 1,060 wins. How much longer do you want to keep doing this? You know, everybody keeps asking me that, but when you have kids like this, it's kind of hard to say no. Well, absolutely. Congratulations, Coach. Enjoy this one. Thank you. Let's bring in Kate McFarland, senior libero, who had a match high 20 digs. And Kate, as one of seven seniors, how does this feel to end your career as state champ? It's just awesome. Like, all of us have been playing together since second grade, so just the feeling is just surreal right now. It's just, it's, it's just so amazing. <laughs> were you surprised that you guys were able to sweep St. Cecilia? Yeah, like, I thought it was going to be a really good battle. And, like, the fact that we came out as hot as we did, that was just, it was just so fun. And it was just a great thing to be a part of. Going 0-3 against them in a different way, do you feel like that gave you guys an edge because you had nothing to lose? And it's tough to beat a team four times. Yeah, they say it's tough to beat a team three times, but four <laughs> times, that's something different. But yeah, I just, that was, I just feel like we had the fire today and like we all just wanted it and it's just awesome. Congratulations, Kate. Thank you. All right, let's bring in Avery Calvota. She had 10 kills this afternoon. And Avery, how does it feel to be a state champ? It feels amazing. We've worked so hard all season. I think our team really deserves this, so it's awesome. 
you guys had a lot of firepower and you guys have a pretty balanced attack. You know, you don't just rely on one arm, you or your sister, really. You have lots of people who can put the ball down. How helpful is that for a team to have such a balanced attack? It's really helpful because um, Katie can just go wherever she needs to go uh, to get a good hit and we can get the ball out evenly to everyone and the younger classmen are really stepped up today. So that was really awesome too. We mentioned it during the broadcast that coach calls the seven seniors the seven dwarfs. <laughs> And you are grumpy, according to Coach, but oh. <laughs> I'm guessing you're not grumpy right now, right? No, I'm, I'm really happy, and we just, this is just awesome. <laughs> Congratulations. Let's bring in your sister, Allison. And Allison is known as Happy on the poster, yeah. and you have to be extra happy right now, right? I'm extremely happy. Our team is so close, and we get along so well, so it just means the world that we all get to experience this together. To, to play for uh, such a prestigious program and for such a great head coach as Sharon Savala, what has that meant to you? Um, it means the world to me. Um, we have the best coach ever. She's so patient with us, and she really just knows like what to do when we're down and to get us back up, so it's, it's amazing. When you think back on your high school career, now that it's over, uh, this obviously has to be the highlight, and how were you guys able to peak the last three days here in Lincoln? I think we just all came together and knew that we had to fight for each point because the games we played were not easy. And we all just worked really hard, especially this last game. We came out with a lot of fire and we just really executed. Allison, congratulations. GICC, your class two state, state champions for the 10th time in program history. The Crusaders are state champs. All right, thanks very much, Ryan. We appreciate that. <laughs> Here's a look at uh, what's happened to date. Three in the books, three yet to come. BDS goes back to back. Diller Odell wins that school's first ever. And on the other spectrum, a 10th state title for Grand Island Central Catholic. And then still to come, Luther and St. Paul up next. That's going to be a good one in Class C1. And then Class B, Duchenne and Scott and Pillion La Vista South and Gretna play to close it out later today. Thoughts on this one? Sharon Savala picks up the 10th. Um, hadn't won it in nine years, um, and they had lost to this team three previous times this year. Well, I think she really spoke to it, too. We've learned and what, where we had to get better every time, and we made a commitment. What, every time we w went away from a loss, we gained something. Right. You know, and so we took that and, and really right now and, and talked about some players really peaking at the right time, and they came in. They played phenomenal here, a sweep. No one would have maybe expected that. Right. But, again, anything can happen. Well, you see the game uh, that's coming up next to here in Class C1 as we look forward to this next match. It's Lincoln Lutheran taking on St. Paul. St. Paul looking for its first ever title. Lincoln Lutheran hasn't won it since 2004. Thoughts on this one? Well, and again, I think it's going to be a great matchup. Again, these, uh, they were in the hunt last year, all three teams, and so we really have teams that have seen each other. They played against each other. St. Paul's coming in. Pretty solid. We'll talk a little bit more about, again, their season getting to this point, too. Should be a good one coming up next. That's the Class C-1 title. Stay with us here on NET. We wrap it up in Class C-2 as, once again, GICC with the sweep and the 10th state championship. For Kathy Wieskamp, I'm Larry Putney. For Ryan Mix and our entire NET Sports production crew, thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here Class C-1 coming up next. and I'm a part of the U.S. Women's Bobsled Team. I'm a four-time All-American and I'm from Norfolk, Nebraska. Bobsledding was definitely not in the picture when I was growing up, but I'm thankful to be where I'm at and I'll never take that for granted. In my career, I'm getting bumped around, bruised in the back of the bobsled, so it's super important that I keep up with my sleep, my nutrition, seeing my trainer, seeing the chiropractor, and staying in the gym so I can be at the top of my game when competition comes.